Hi, uh, I'm Kanchana Velakedara. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, the inner source pattern, which is often seen in fintech. Uh, the why that I'm uh, quoted the fintechs. The challenges are very common across the fintech companies, as the engineering teams are found later uh, after the after they define the business. So uh, to scale up the customer services and scale. Uh, when when the when their financial services are being scaled up, that is where they found the engineering team. So, because of that, the initial stages, the fintech companies used to buy the technology from vendor base uh, uh, vendor base support, as well as vendor base software. So, with that, over the years, we often seen that uh, there are many uh, uh, engineering silos formatted within the company. As, as well as the scaling up architecture has been limited. So there, there will be limitation for the, the scaling out the, the software as well. We often see in, the, in FinTechs, there are deep hierarchy structure. So process frictions um, is a key that when you have to maintain a big hierarchy, the de decision making gets slow. Uh, the security vulnerabilities, the outside regularities that the financial institute or an organization need to follow, are uh, very, uh, uh, very intense. So we, because of these reasons, uh, we set a common context and common. We identified common co forces when we try to implement in a source within a fintech company. Uh, let's move into a little detail about that how this all uh, happens, how uh, we can begin the inner source uh, within an uh, organization. So what I'm, right, uh, what I'm presenting right now is the inner source pattern. Uh, the way that a company can approach to implement the inner source in the very, very initial stage. So at this time, there will be an uh, initiative coming from the leadership that we need to do in a source within our company and we need to uh, make results down the line in in given time so the the information that i'm presenting right now so we have the inner source program and we have a inner source uh, review committee while having that set up we approach each team uh, to be considered the inner source the it's it's uh, the reason uh, behind that when we talk to each team and each individual who wanted to get on boarded with inner source they will join with a passion they will they will have a motivation to achieve something and resolve some of the engineering problem using the inner source uh, methodology this is exactly what's happening in the the open source communities as well they are key drive is the voluntary base uh, uh, commitment and also their passion to the technology. The idea here is get the same momentum with from our organization, uh, each individual commitment to achieve the inner source in a better way. When we begin, we go out there to the team as an inner source office staff and then explain what is the inner source is and we explain what are the company goals and we try to identify what's the team interest on inner source in which level and which best practices that they want to want to follow so we bubble up their problem and oversee that problem and we want we look look for their commitment to resolve those problem uh, in the best way that they can work it out. So the team knows their own technical problems. They would come and say, these three factors that we wanted to resolve with the inner source, we have less collaboration, we have less mentorship, we have the less model modularity in our software architecture. So we wanted to achieve these three factors using inner source methodology. When, when that commitment comes, the team represents each individual uh, aspects also. The individual matches one of, one of these uh, 
best practices as their own goal. And that obviously uh, coming from the, the organization goal. So we will see a match that from top of the organization up to the individual, we have a shared goal. That's, that's a very good context to begin with. Once we begin with that context, with the concept of the shared goals, and down the line, we will do the adapt adaption. In the adaption, obviously, we are going to find the, the, the find a lot of challenges. Uh, I'm going to talk about three main challenges that we will face down the line when we are actually executing these organization challenges. We talk about the, the security vulnerabilities and the deep hierarchical setup and the process frictions. Those are very common in a large or a medium or even a startup of a uh, FinTech company. And the cultural, it'll be a big shift for people to understand what it means the inner source than a day job. And we have to establish the meritocracy within the teams and the community pyramid. Each unit of the organization, the smaller unit could be the, the team. And within the team, we identify a community pyramid. And the way the individual achieve their individual goals, which matches with the team goals through the community pyramid with the help of the culti mentorship. And it's not the, the traditional management hierarchy that we see in a general organization. The technical challenge. So when we doing this implementation, we might come, the middle management come uh, sometime later and, the, and then they could complain, oh, this is not working. So there should be some reason why it's not working. So there, there is a technical participation, mainly the, the huge engineering silos that we oftenly seen in FinTechs. There should be an ar architectural participation and the infrastructure, the process frictions, uh, course tied up the open uh, or tied up the uh, the infrastructure as much as possible to uh, protect from the cyber attacks and protect from the other security vulnerabilities so we we have to have open in infrastructure infrastructure within the firewall and right and same thing with the which goes, we have to produce some business out of this process. So how do how do we how do we do that? And for that, we need some technical um, needs of tools to measure in a source uh, success. And those measures should be uh, correct measurements, not as simple as just a few commit message uh, uh, the commit messages. So. Dealing with these three adaptions is commonly identified in, in implementing uh, open source within a fintech company. So in the growing and the scaling process, once we make, so we, we identify the context and we identify uh, relevant uh, forces. Uh, so we have a good problem in there to resolve. And also the resolving context, we will be dealing with uh, all these uh, the setup context as well as the forces and move into the green line that we are gate going the phase one. So grow and the scale it would be the second phase. When we have a good working model for open source at the first phase one, we will come up, we will have some green lights to go for the phase two with the individual and team credibility and some business results, and we'll have some tools to me measure the success and proven um, concepts that this is working. And also we can identify what's no, not working. Every team already uh, following some, if, if the existing teams are already following some good things, we need to continue with that. What we are fixing is what not working uh, and what not helping uh, to grow uh, as a as a team in innovation and the good with good leaders and so on and so forth. 
So we had that calculation and assessments at the end of the phase one. So it's a good kickstart for organization to process with the uh, inner source. I move into the next slide and um, our end results would be that individual out of this exercise, individual goal has a matching uh, shared goal with the team and the team has a matching goal where with the organization success in a, in, in, in a source. And that is what we are care, that, that is where we find a pattern that it could drive better, the, the inner source could drive better when we have that expectation and that shared goals uh, set. So we create the synergy in there. Let's stick into this use case a little further. So pattern of the shared goal in inner source, uh, it's really working. Uh, the reason is in this particular example that we have a team and that team wants to do more modularity, more collaboration and mentorship. So we need to buy in the management for all this new thing. And we, we should, um, uh, and the management should understand what the community is. The team is not just a hierarchical setup, but it's a community. There are human uh, engineers working in there. They have a real motivation factors to uh, uh, grow up, up to the ladder in the community. And uh, we have to define the mentoring responsibilities. And we had to give a, a proper infrastructure for them to uh, code the commit and comment on the commit, review effective uh, pull request, um, uh, effective way and uh, feedback me mechanism. So those are the forces when we initially start with, we had to figure out uh, those could be negative forces, there could be positive forces as well. So we need to figure out, that's why those are on red color. And the one of the team members in the team could say, hey, I want to become an, uh, quality mentorship, mentor. So in that context, the team want to produce more quality mentor, mentors down the line. So that helps to figure out, so there's a joint uh, individual who really motivated on that and the team really motivated on that and the organization want more quality mentors. So we could see we can come to a resulting um, context that we need to buy in the management. We had to build more awareness in, uh, of the management. It's not the typical hierarchical setup now. We have uh, the uh, competent-based community pyramid within our teams. So we need to recognize these extra efforts coming in from engineers to become a, a quality mentor. And we have to recognize them in personally and publicly. And if, we also have to assess, have they been effective as uh, mentors for the other teams? So we need, to have, we need to find a mechanism and we have to drive towards to see if the men, mentee has achieved their goal within the community. Uh, more mentor responsibilities on the job will help uh, reducing the other obstacle for the mentee so then we encourage that mentee to uh, do more uh, of uh, mentor responsibilities than any other. Uh, often seen in fintechs that access is restricted as much as possible. Again, that regularities, security vulnerabilities, we are all in there. So we, we have to find the mechanism as whatever the resources available in the organization that given an access without uh, violating the security. For example, if the manager has to add you to the, the team repository uh, in a formal manner with the, usually that takes a request, request process, which will go through entire hierarchy. Rather doing that, we would encourage individual to request and get automatic approved, but still we have a record in there so that the individual uh, developer doesn't have to wait for someone else else's uh, approval, but it's still it will be recorded. So if something happened, we we have the traceability. Uh, also, the uh, in that way, when someone coming into the organization, what usually happens is manager give the privilege to get the access for any repo. 
the particular repos. But in this way, the, the engineer can actually uh, get the access with the, with, for a certain time period, uh, raising a request, and then that will automatically approve with the record. And the preserved communication is very important uh, when, when, when we have a shared goal with the team and the individual. So team need to keep, keep uh, close uh, monitoring about how we are progressing on this uh, shared goal of producing more cultivators. And this, uh, the, if the individual has a conflict of interest of the inner source, uh, pattern uh, the inner source solutions that we, they need to bring in. So they, they might either need to find another another team that who are doing that. But for this example, so there's a team agreement in between the individual that they share a, a common goal. So the, so at the end of the day, um, after some times while we practicing this more the pattern, we will see. Uh, there, as a resolution, there are more quality mentors uh, are coming into the organization and they are practicing this daily basis in multiple teams. Uh, let's move on to the other, the, the, the resulting context that we talk about. So management need to support the shared goal for inner source in every level and uh, don't let down the motivation of the individual. So the, the reason why I'm saying that the manager that you're report, that this, uh, the reporting would be different from your actual mentor. So the manager should not interfere on that. So actually the manager may not have the skill set to mentor, the, mentor the, the person who wanted to share, achieve some goals. Manager may not have the technical competency. So, the, when the manager get independent only to handle the HR uh, the aspects, the other mentor can carry forward the technical engineer to, the, to achieve his own goal. And awareness of the community pyramid uh, in a setup like J, day job of a uh, fintech uh, company is, uh, goes very less to average. So we have to make that awareness among the management, this is how it works. We respect the meritocracy, and uh, we we need to uh, understand. We need to get more people in climb up to help uh, to climb the ladder up. And also, the individual contributions should be recognized personally and publicly, and that will help for them to keep the momentum going and do more contribution. Support to be a quality mentor by giving more mentoring set responsibilities. They, they could get off from the production support and, and other responsibilities in that defined because the roles are generally defined when you recruit an engineer for a fintech company. So you can minimize the other obstacle and have a better focus on that. Uh, far often facts, um, fair often facts, right? Uh, assessment if the mentor could help mentee to achieve more community goal as well as it's um, important provide correct tooling to handle the uh, right feedback team team feedback to the individual so generally in fintechs there are more um, tools that annual base uh, contribution and there are um, feedback providing uh, feedback tools that they can reuse for this aspect. The idea is preserving that conversation in between mentee and the, the mentor and the team and the mentee and the mentor and all that relationships. So let's move on to the um, other pattern, which is called the arch architectural participation. So I'm setting a context, example context here, which is we have a team Again, it's a we, we are on a com community pyramid and we wanted to do uh, modularity as a team. So within our team, we have an engineering silo and in that silo, there's a one vendor based software which, in, which is um, working as a pillow to that silo. So 
we have a context now. Let's see what are the forces on that that we need to uh, overcome. The proprietary software obviously makes a lot of frictions on 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 the the scaling up and the 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 scaling out of the uh, the architecture. Uh, one reason is the vendor support is 24 hours commitment, though it is that it could get delayed. When you have a big engineering silo to get into the CICD uh, uh, and have a continuous integration is a challenge. You had to make sure the whole old silo get deployed, uh, get built. So when you have a one thing holding uh, dependency, it can, it won't be super slick to get a CICD resolved at once. So we feel this, this doesn't work anymore. So there's a negativity on that. We, we realize, the team realized it's not working. And this uh, engineering silo wrap up all the information one over another. It's so hard to see the what's inside and less openness within an engineering silo. We have co common seen all this problem in any um, engineering silo. So holding on some, um, you know, the red box in that silo uh, drive us, uh, us to, to be less, innovate, less innovation. The reason is that we have to open up all what's wrapped around on it to investigate and then uh, to see how we can improve that. And also it's less agile when, you, when, when engineering silos are mostly waterfall. So uh, it's, it's so hard to move, get done a one little bug fix in that uh, engineering silo because it could impact the whole silo and we had to test and it should go through the full, full software life cycle. So how do we produce a resulting uh, context to get a better resolution for this problem? First, we can work on the optimized dependencies. They could be used on old one, uh, need to be upgraded. So we get a, a report, we do a re thorough analysis on the, the dependencies, what holding that one unique property software, and then we can isolate that. After isolating that, the the vendor-based software could sit on a one module and the rest could deviate from that. Here we chosen to scale up to serve more customers and also try to scale out the architecture so it can horizontally grow um, and lead, that can lead to the more innovation to use a new technology. And we can always perform generally where when we get to a point that we have to replace something over other, we go for the design analysis documentation. We do a thorough design analysis. Uh, analysis. Uh, is this when the base software can be replaced with this open source uh, software? So that, that conversation, it's a detailed analysis that the engineering can, engineers can work on. When you module, when you break down this big engineering silo, it's, it's a smooth CICD process. It's continuous delivery will happen. And address tech debts. So holding a one a pillar of a big piece of a chunk of software within a silo uh, can cause a lot of tech debts. What if, what, what then? Um, there could be dependencies um, that we need to um, run through and then see if they are the if those are the latest ones if not how do we replace that all that tech tech depths are we really using that or not so we need to come up with a list and identify those tech tech depths which helps unwrapping this big big engineering silo to uh, and what it made uh, out of it uh, and also when we have this modularization we have a clear picture of the uh, agile Let's see what's generated as a, as a result. Uh, the good things happen after this exercise, after following this pattern. We have a broken silo, engineering silo, and the clean architecture, an unblock uh, scaling up and out. Um, 
scaling up is a more uh, client while we are growing as a horizontal architecture pattern that we can lead to more innovation. And we feel the inner source works because developer can come in and, uh, you know, look into the little pieces of the software which is made and do the bug fixing, do the quality assurance and lead that to the entire software design uh, life cycle uh, process. And we can actually do the faster delivery of first. Uh, uh, of any piece, one functionality holding on a one module, we can take it forward even the other is broken. So faster ramp up when the newcomer join in the, in the team, we could, we could see that they are progressing uh, pretty fast on their ramp up uh, time uh, to get to know those modules. They are, they are being independent. Um, and, and with this, the organization reach, uh, collectively reach the velocity that they wanted to be uh, from individual, where that the individual team need to, needed to be. Um, so, and, and, and once this happens, let's move on to the other topic uh, that how we, how, how this re resulting context being, uh, to summary the results uh, context, how that being helped to generate that uh, resolution. Uh, optimizing dependencies, like I mentioned, we can opt out the delays of the vendor support, and it's easy to decommission. And build now a new model modules for new features. When there's a new feature coming from the customer, we can say, uh, "All right, so we are going to use. We are not going to use, continue to use Java, but we are going to use a Kotlin on this module. So that way, uh, having that clean architecture." and still backward compatible with the older architecture, we, we use tons of reusability, reusable software to build the new code, but still in a very innovative way with the new language. And uh, the engineers can, doesn't have to follow the same technology stack, they can grow in different technology stacks also. So modules make scaling up and out, the, out easily. I, I think I described it earlier as well. So we, we look at the more loosely coupled um, architecture in that. And also um, uh, easy maintainability is a key when you have a module. So we feel that finally the inner source is working. Let's move on to the last topic and the pattern that we can talk about uh, the quality mentorship. We touch base with this topic a little bit, but here I'm talking a little different aspect of the quality mentorship. So there's a, a like earlier, there's a context that we set initially when we starting up the inner source uh, in the organization, that individual need, individual individuals in the team uh, could share a goal with the organization level via the team. So when an individual wanted to be a quality mentor, there are certain forces that we identify within a, within a general context. 120 of time for mentoring. How do we find that extra? 100% 100 is the eight hours per day. And how do we find that extra 20 minutes? When you block by the other res responsibilities, uh, being a mentor is most likely to be a trusted committer. Trusted committer has a lot of other responsibilities. They know the code ba base better. They have more support. Um, they have to attend more su product support calls and the product owner calls because they, they know what can be done with the code. They are, they are very thorough in the code base. While having those other responsibilities, how do we find that time factor, extra time factor of 20%? And manager versus the mentor, this could be a conflicting for an individual when you have a manager who can really support to move on with your uh, own goals. And um, lack of correct measurement to the, the quality mentorship. Uh, how do you really get a correct me me mentorship on the call uh, for the quality mentorship? And how do we gather that data? Uh, it's, a, it's a key problem because this is more based on more human uh, interaction. And mentor-mentee feedback, 
how does it work? How do we preserve that menti, menti, mentor feedback? And the, we expect the mentor to be persistent. And um, this mentorship could be not a shared goal within a team. If the team think we are perfect about the mentorship, uh, if an individual wanted within that team to be a mentor, that would be a conflict. So how do we, how do we handle this uh, to a green line con uh, resulting context to achieve uh, a better resolution on this? So 120 time is literally not practical. So this could be the mentorship could be a new Jira ticket or a story in the agile board. And uh, we have to see not only the mentor, mentor aspects, but the mentee goals as well. Uh, the mentee need to provide the feedback with the evidence to the mentor that, that this is what happened on this contract on the mentee-mentor uh, uh, relationship. And this time that we spend uh, from this week to this week, achieving this goal has the mentee the given that time has the mentee achieved that goal that's the key and what are the key the the key support that the mentee got um, from the mentor so all that detail need to be preserved and communication communicated and if if there is a positive vibes generated in that relationship those mentors should be recognize publicly and personally. And, and also the mentor, uh, mentor given more mentor responsibilities, rather, rather uh, the other responsibilities will get a more focus onto that mentor to perform the, the mentorship role better. And all these discussions should be preserved um, in a manner that we can go we can reuse later when there's a new bee coming into the team from another team or a new joinee that they can go back and pull out that data so we have that superpower in the open source communities we we have the mail archives many of the fintechs they they pledge uh, their the, the purge their emails in every six months uh, due to the, ca the the capacity but it's uh, there are like stack overflow, the Git, um, and also uh, there are feedback uh, uh, tools that we can use uh, to track these activities. Uh, and the other fact is the 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 resolve. We need to resolve the conflict of deep deep uh, hierarchy, setting up the management to the better understanding how the open source community works. So at the resolution for an organization, practice this pattern would help to identify more quality mentors, which is actually lacking within a big hierarchical, traditional software engineering firm. Better ecosystem. So we we build human relationships while you are working on, on that. Also, when we work on mentor-mentee based relationship, we also set some expectation. Mentor should follow these these rules before you are sending a re pull request you need to at least look for the the syntax and do some unit testing is it building is it broken code when you set that expectation the human interaction to bring into that human in interactions they are they are being more responsible they are, they respect they start learning to respect the other people's time in the both ways and also we could see a cultural shift that more human interactions even within that eight nine hours that we spend on on our office work it's more productive and it's lead to more conversation more technology conversation and the knowledge will be shared at the end of the day the organization will produce a lot of documentation that you don't need to uh, put different effort or extra effort to achieve. Let's see how this resulting context uh, forces, made a resulting context to move to the resolution. 
mental mental responsibility actually this is a summary of that so more time for mentoring as relevant is a key to be good at mentorship the mentor men, mentor with certain expectation from both ways that people will learn to respect other other people's time and it will bring a good ecosystem very organic relationship in between the mentor and mentee to move forward with the other goals mentee mentor communication preserving is important tracking is important because at the end of the day we have to generate business mentor mentee feedback uh, we have to use an effective tools and that is where we can gather uh, there are a lot of uh, ai bringing into the fintechs uh, they are they are trying to do the the discovery of discussion and do the the patternize uh, and get data analysis on the more community works so some of the fintech companies they use the stack the over stack flow uh, for this purpose and they are the feedback tool so they gather their data and try to correlate uh, those data and then uh, provide an evident out of that this discussion happen this uh, mentor mentor relationship was established uh, so these were the these are the results so those those can be at in their animal assessments and uh, there will be a winning um, win win situation for the organization and the individuals thank you everyone for attending for today's session um, i hope that it was helpful to get an idea of different inner source pattern that we can use in the initial phase of the inner source implementing as well as how important the architectural pattern and also the 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 pattern for the quality mentorship that you can reuse in any organization um, though it's though i quote it as a fintech uh, that will work for any other organization uh, we are we are talking about uh, the mentorship and the mentee which is a general topic thank you